We're going to start with a little review of inequalities, and then we're going to learn how to solve and graph inequalities. So I don't know how many of you have ever seen an inequality before, but the chances are you have. So this symbol right here is the less than symbol, and it's saying that whatever that this is both of these signs are like equals, but instead of saying that this is equal to this, they're going to say that either this is less than blank or this is greater than blank. So when your little point is facing that way, it means that this is less than this, and that this is greater than this. So now that we know that, I'm going to show you what a basic inequality looks like, where s is greater than 6. And we always look at this inequality symbol from the variables perspective, because we could write this as this, which means that 6 is less than s, but it means that s is greater than 6. So s is greater than 6, or we could say that t is less than 7. And those are what basic inequalities look like. So when we solve our inequalities, we're going to graph them. And you always graph the solution to an inequality on a number line. So when you have an inequality that has less than or equal, I'm sorry, if you have an inequality that's less than or greater than, when you graph it, you're going to use an open circle. And that's not going to really make sense to you right now, but it will in a minute when we go on to graphing. But if you have less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it's going to be a closed circle. And the most important thing to remember when solving inequalities is that if you divide or multiply your inequality by a negative, you must flip your inequality. So if I had negative x is less than 2, when I divide by the negative 1, I'm going to get x is greater than negative 2. That inequality sign has to flip, otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer. So now let's do an example. 9 is less than 3 times the quantity of 1 minus s. And this is an s, if you couldn't tell, sorry. Kind of looks like a weird 5. So first thing we're, we're going to do is distribute that 3 over. 9 is less than 3 minus 3s. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get 6 is less than negative 3s. I'm going to divide by negative 3 and negative 3. And when you solve this, this is what you want to think. If you divide by a negative, if you divide by a negative, then you flip your sign. So negative 2 and we're going to flip it, is greater than s. So that means s is less than negative 2. Either way is correct. So when I said when we graph it on a number line, we, we'll, we're going to graph it on a number line that looks like this. So we're going to find negative 2 on the number line, which it will be right here. And we're going to put a circle over negative 2. Now remember, if it's just less than or greater than, it's going to have an open circle. And if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're going to have a closed circle. So since it's only less than, we're going to have a open circle. And we're going to shade the direction of the inequality. 
So there's two ways you can remember this. You can remember that this inequality points to the left, so I'm going to shade to the left, or you can think of it more, ma more mathematically, and we're going to put an arrow right here because remember, lines go on forever, or you could plug in a number that's on the left of your circle, which would be like negative 4. Well, is negative 4 less than negative 2? Yes, because remember, as we go, as we get more negative, we're decreasing in value. And then you would pick a number to your right to make sure that it doesn't work to your right. Well, is 2 less than negative 2? No, it's greater than negative 2, so that's how you know that you were supposed to shade it this way. So we have one more example that we're going to do. So, negative 3 times the quantity of 2m minus 8 is less than or equal to 2 quanti times the quantity of m plus 2. So first thing we're going to do is distribute on both sides of the equation. So we have negative 6m plus 24 less than or equal to 2m plus 28. Now some of you might say that, well didn't we, div didn't we multiply by a negative? Yes we did, but we don't flip the sign yet because we only multiplied one side by a negative. It only affects your inequality when you have to multiply both sides or divide both sides by a negative. So then I'm going to move the 2m this way and this is going to be, I'm going to subtract 2m from both sides. So this becomes negative 8m plus 24 less than or equal 28. I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides and I get negative 8m is less than or equal to 4. So I'm going to divide by negative 8 and divide by negative 8. So since I divided both sides by a negative number, I'm going to flip my inequality and if I reduce this, this becomes negative one-half. So we're going to find negative one-half on our number line, which is going to be about right there, and we're going to put a circle on it. Okay, so if you remember your rules for graphing, since this is greater than or equal to negative one-half, we're going to close this circle and fill it in because if you think about it, negative one-half is less than or equal to negative one-half. Yes, that's true, so we can fill that in. And so you can think of it two ways. You can say, oh look, my inequality is pointing that way, so I'm going to shade in this way, and we can check it mathematically by saying that plugging in a number to the left and to the right. Well, if I plugged in negative 2, is negative 2 greater than or equal to negative 1 half? No. Is 3 greater than or equal to negative 1 half? Yes. So I know I shaded it the right way. So that's all we're going to do with inequalities today. But make sure you come back and watch your next lesson where we're going to talk about compound inequalities that have more than one answer.